Welcome back to Literosity. Throughout all content areas, we look for ways to blend lessons and engage community partners in order to enhance student learning. Recently, at the Museum of Fine Arts in St. Petersburg, we did just that. So we actually have three partners working together tonight. We have our Pinellas County Schools, we have the Museum of Fine Arts in St. Petersburg, and we have the Stavros Institute at the University of South Florida in Tampa. The Stavros Institute and Pinellas County Schools has worked closely together for decades. And the Museum of Fine Arts is a partnership that we've also had now for many years. So we're, by putting this all together tonight, we've brought all three partnerships together um, to engage our teachers in understanding inquiry and how they can build inquiry skills with their students. Michelle and I kind of put together um, over a, a period of time, we've been looking at using museum artifacts as something to engage students in social studies. Because the instructional strategy that we're going to be using tonight involves the use of inquiry skills. Slayer and a friend of Monet. Look at that, when the doctor orders fresh air sleep, we went to the post of Monet. So it's not like she was shipwrecked or anything, she actually went there. And allowing students to build their own uh, questioning techniques for when they're looking at different kinds of artifacts or imagery or any kind of text, really. Well, look at that. How about where? So a trace-based case is you start with a trace <laughs> of history and then you trace it by introducing other, um, other, other sources. So we might start with an artifact and then we, we put in a map and we put in a timeline and we put in you know, a quote and some writing and some, maybe some other photographs or images and, and we end up you know, tracing that item in terms of um, what its meaning was in history. An artifact and then you see the write-up of the artifact. We'll start with um, going through, working through one of these trace-based cases all together. Then we, after that we will walk through the museum and then teachers will be able to see all these different artifacts so they'll be able to think of how they could put their own together. When I taught fourth grade in the full-time gifted program at Ridgecrest, our fourth graders read a chapter book called A Single Shard and it's a piece of, it's a chapter book that delves into Korean history and it's about an orphan boy who rises in his social status by learning from a master artisan and eventually becomes a commissioned uh, artist for the emperor. And it's all about a celadon vase that he's supposed to take to the emperor that he ends up breaking. It's called a single shard. In our culminating activity, we make little um, vases or little pieces of clay the kids do and then they glaze them green but to actually see the celadon that came from Korea during that time frame would be an invaluable experience. We looked up pictures online and we can see it but to be able to see the different shades of color takes it to a whole nother level. So tonight in this training I got a better level of confidence to bring in museum pieces and artifacts into the classroom. A lot of my students struggle with reading straight from a textbook and so, re so bringing real life history into the classroom to me is exciting. We're on India now right before the midterms and we're talking about Buddha and so when I saw Buddha over there it's a newer representation, a more modern representation of Siddhartha so I want to bring that into the classroom and show them that there are many different types of Buddha. Even though what we're talking about from our textbook, that the idea of Buddha has evolved in history. It tells another story, but it just tells a so much deeper story today of what, yeah, of what they were forgetting. It's like there, but it's hidden, and she's brought that to the front. Walking around, I teach uh, AP United States History. And so I was trying to look for something that would really hit my it's students. Like the, the more you look into it and the more you start asking the questions, the more you see. Uh, we do have to, within the AP curriculum, analyze paintings and political cartoons and artwork. So uh, we're currently doing the Civil War. Uh, and so when I saw this in Harper's Weekly, what Walker has done here is pulled something from the past and brought her own interpretation from the present. And so within my curriculum, it's continuity and change over time. And so it just hits on multiple levels. Too much. Yeah. 
Because <laughs> I would do this with um, my students all the So one of the things that we talk about in middle school a lot is how to engage our students in critical thinking. And we know one of the keys for engagement is to have them interact more with the content that they're learning. So when we provide students with an artifact or a piece of text, but then we allow them to explore what that is and how they can understand it and make meaning from it, we authentically engage them in their learning. And through the content, we're able to teach those skills.